down a thousand times. I ain't going nowhere. Yeah, I'm standing right here. Demons all around, but I ain't got no fear. Alright guys, welcome to the show. Got an exciting one here with Fantasy's First Lady. We've got Gwen in the house and we are talking about six fantasy football sleepers that we like, we love, and you guys must draft this year. I don't like hers. I'm going to be straight up. I, she might not like mine, but that's where we're going to have a fight. We're going to debate here today. What's going on, Gwen? Welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm um, really excited to talk about sleepers today. It's hard to top that other episode we just did, you know, yesterday, which was <laughs> draft date and dump. I know a lot of people enjoyed that episode, so we're, it's going to be hard to top. But I mean, who doesn't want to hear about sleepers? I mean, th- there was a lot of sleeping going on with Deshaun Watson in that episode. Right? <laughs> he, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> if you guys not listen to that episode. Go back right now. It's called Draft Date and Dump. It is. It's a good one. And I'm not a comedian or any and by any means. But I was laughing out loud to my own jokes. It was pretty funny. So uh, today's a different show. Again, we are talking about sleepers. We've got six of them for you. She's got three. I've got three. Before we do get into this, make sure you guys do secure the 16-round draft solution. Sleepers, breakouts, all the sleepers, breakouts, optimal players drafted each round, printable cheat sheet. Everything is there for you guys to crush your leagues. And, of course, guys, join the Patreon group, patreon.com forward slash ffcounselor. Gwen and I are going to give you direct access in there, uh, vlogs, Talking football, waiver wire, in-season stuff, starts and sets, optimal DFS plays. We deliver that as well. Patreon.com forward slash FF Counselor for amazing community, guys. You can't go wrong. We've linked it below. Gwen, are you ready to dive into this with your sleeper here? And uh, I'm excited to hear who who you've got. Actually, I know who you've got. I'm not going to fool the audience here. (laughs) I I really don't like this person for fantasy, but I'm going to cue up a magical twinkle for you. Who is your first fantasy football sleeper? I'm going to go with Isaiah Hodgins as my first sleeper. Um, And I'm actually really excited about him as a sleeper. I don't know if it's because he abused the Vikings twice on national TV, but he's a big body that can go up and get balls. He's obviously – he has a familiarity with Dable from his time at Buffalo, um, enough for him to claim Hodgins off waivers in the middle of the season last year when they were having injury issues at the position. Um, He's coming into the camps as a starter with the opportunity to box out Slayton, Campbell, Shepard, and Robinson as the wide receiver one. So I think he's a good sleeper. You got me thinking here, and I just, he's not on my radar. He's not in 16 rounds, you know, 6'4", what is he, 200 plus pounds, still a young guy, what, 24 years old. Yeah. He's only sitting 71 on the, Sheeps is on the consensus rankings. Now, he did have a good, he did have a good run week 13 to 17, had some good, you know, some good uh, points those weeks, you know, put up some points. Again, not a guy that I'm excited about, to say the least. I mean, they did draft a young Jalen Hyatt, who is kind of known as a one trick pony. I'd rather have Hyatt. I like the youth, the upside. Now, another thing that was a problem here is a six round pick. This Hodgins Hodgins guy, again, just not a guy that excites me. So I think we have a totally different opinion on him. Yeah. Could it go off? Maybe. I mean, I don't like the other options there, but not a guy I like, but a guy that you like. So fair enough. I mean, you could draft them. We'll play against each other and we'll see who wins. Yeah. Agree to disagree. <laughs> there we go. It's our first battle. Second <laughs> guy here. I love this sleeper. Love, love, love him. Currently RB 26 ish, which is crazy for a guy that's going to be primed for a ton of workload. The guy I'm talking about is Damian Pierce. Now, someone was saying it's Damian Pierce, but it's spelled Damian. So I'm going to stick with that, like Neon Damian. What do you think? I mean, even if he says it's Damian, you're still going to call him Damian, aren't you? And I'm going to pronounce it however he pronounces it. Just like <laughs> Bijan. <laughs> Bye, Jan Bijan. And the worst one is Rudy Gobert. They're calling him Gobert. I mean, the basketball player. It's There's no bear in there. It's Bert. Go Bert. But everyone's <laughs> calling him Gobert. I don't know. Just craziness. Uh, I disagree. Oh, well. All right. Damian Pierce. Okay. Love him, and I got him in round six in a in a two thousand dollar buy in league. Tons of upside, just under a thousand yards last year. Got hurt last year. I think it was an ankle near the end of the season. He's going to be the guy. They brought in Devin Singletary. Years to wow us, we're not wowed. Damian Pierce is going to eat. You're getting an RB one. I'm looking at a two hundred twenty attempt floor yet again, maybe even more. 
Love the upside, love the opportunity. Obviously, rookie quarterback, suspect wide receivers. There's some question marks. That's why his value is so good. Again, sitting, again, like I said, RB, I think 20, sorry, RB 20th, 20 to 26, depending on PPR, whatever league you're in. Love him. Love the upside. People are sleeping on him. Damian Pierce. Are you drafting Damian or are you going to pass on him? Uh, I, and we talked about him on a previous show, but, and you know, the Texans did sign Singletary, mm-hmm. and I think that's going to eat into his carries. And Good. he's coming off the ankle injury, which I don't really like. And <laughs> um, But he's a solid value at his ADP if he returns to the form of um, the first half yeah. of the year. And in the seventh round, I don't mind someone like Pierce, but someone like Isaiah Pacheco I think is going to have a better year than him. He could. He runs hard. Pacheco does run hard on the Chiefs. Good runner. All right, let's move on to your number three here. Who do you have here as your second or second, your number two sleeper three overall on our list? Who do you love here at the sleeper position or a sleeper? Uh, I'm going to go with David Montgomery for this. Okay. Uh, I feel like actually every show I pick another Lions player, but I really just love that offense. The Lions paid Montgomery before draft night where they moved mm-hmm. Swift and they drafted Gibbs and that investment is going to ensure that Montgomery is receiving touches. I think he will most likely take over the role Jamal Williams vacated while Gibbs yeah. takes over Swift's role. Mm-hmm. Um, I like Montgomery because with, a mediocre offensive line over the last few years he was still able to run efficiently i'm excited to see how he does with a competent offensive line not to mention the williams role came with 17 rushing tds last year so i so you're high i like so him so you're high on montgomery this year yeah i'm, I'm high on montgomery I, I don't care for him. I, I Again, he's been lackluster, to say the least, had his share of injuries throughout the years. Maybe it was the offense. But, yeah, he definitely could take over that Williams role. But I think too many people expect him to take that role. And I think because of that, it's not going to be as anticipated. So many things happened the year before, and people con- or compare that and think it's going to work out the exact same way. I don't think so. I mean, they really, you know, aimed high and they got Gibbs. They, it was a controversial pick. Cause you're like, you're paying Montgomery, what three years, I don't know, 18, some odd million. And then you get, you know, Gibbs with your first pick, you have other options to get. They believe in Gibbs. And I've said this before. I sound like a broken record. They want Gibbs to be what Deandre Swift wasn't. And he's so much better. Right. And you get Gibbs in like the third round. And I think talent rises to the top. And yes, I see Montgomery, maybe even starting the season off as the starting running back. And yeah, he's a sleeper. I think, he maybe even surpasses Gibbs. We don't know. But I just think the talent with Gibbs is there. He's ultra explosive, dynamic playmaker. And you wouldn't draft him with your first overall pick so high in the first round if you're not gonna, you know, not gonna use him. And there's tons of volume to be had for both these guys. So 400 plus attempts. They're gonna run the ball a lot. Um, I'm excited for both. I think, you know, I hope Dave Montgomery doesn't dip into Gibbs because I got him on my team. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> All right, next one here is my uh, sleeper here at the quarterback position. Hustle Russell Wilson. I, I, I love him. <laughs> Boo. Well, why, why, don't, why don't you like Wilson? I mean, I, you, why don't you? Because I think when I sent you this, you weren't happy about it. What's the deal? Why don't you like Wilson? I mean, he's one of the greatest uh, the past 10 years anyway. Uh, well, I, first, I think calling him a sleeper is funny because I'm sure his team wishes he would be a sleeper on the <laughs> plane rides. Um, but, but he's clearly on the wrong side of 30. I think what made him dynamic in the past was his ability to extend plays to find open guys, and he's not able to do that anymore. Um, Peyton coming in could help him out, but everybody thought Nathaniel Hackett was an offensive guru, and he couldn't even get anything out of Russ. So I think the only place that Broncos country is riding to with him is – into a landfill. <laughs> so you really are not sold on Russell Wilson bouncing back? No, not at all. Well, you're going to be wrong because Russell Wilson <laughs> is going to be great this year. Now, my only knock is, and so like, why do you always talk about his wife? Sierra, she's she amazing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I mean, he's obviously. That doesn't help him play football, though. He's distracted. He's really like, he's kind of a diva, you know, courtside seats to the Denver Nuggets games. I'm a celebrity. I'm paid. I got the hot wife. Hot wife. And it's like the guy, I think he's kind of in his own zone now. He's just, I think the hunger is gone. But I'm hoping just for his legacy reasons that he bounces back this year. Again, Peyton, uh, they've got some, you know, Jerry Judy bounced back here. Javante Williams healthy. He could be a good offense this year. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be a boomer bust. But either way, for fantasy, you get him, like, he's pretty much either going undrafted or super late in two quarterback leagues. And this guy was a top five type finisher at the quarterback position years ago. Can he re- return to some sort of form where he was the top of the game in Seattle? Very unlikely. But, hey, that's why he's a sleeper with some upside. Yeah, I just don't think you can use Sierra as the 
like distraction because Tom Brady played amazing when he was with Giselle and they were happily married. Yeah. So he can do it. And then they were getting divorced and he played worse. So I think Russ, you can't use that as an argument in my opinion. Maybe not different people though. And now Brady, I think there's rumors. He's talking to Kardashian and all this. Oh my stuff. gosh. I really hope not. I'd really, hope not. <laughs> he doesn't need any of that. Drama. No, I loved the barstool president video about, um, about that where he's like, no, she's a deal. Like she's a trash a list celebrity. Don't date yeah. her. <laughs> yeah. I so, agree with that. I hope I that, that I hope those rumors are not true. No, I hope so too. Uh, and it's a big, big downgrade from Giselle. That's for sure. Oh, big down, big yes, down. Very large. You want, you want to level up your game, Brady. You don't want to go down. Yeah. Uh, all right. Next guy here. And I don't understand you. Cause you're talking about like wrong side of 30, blah, blah, blah. And then you pull up this guy who's washed. He had his last hurrah, blew his load in the super bowl. Matt Stafford. Like what's the deal with this guy? Like I, maybe a bounce back, but I think he's done. I think he's washed. Yeah. So I, so my pick is Matt Stafford. Um, so I think if you miss one of the top dogs, I recommend taking two of the lower tier guys after you fill out the skill positions. I think one of the guys I'm trying to grab, if that's the case, is Matt Stafford. He threw for almost 5,000 yards and over 40 touchdowns years ago on route to the Super Bowl win. Um, the Rams were plagued by injuries last year. So as long as the offensive line of the Rams can keep Stafford from injury, I don't think there's any reason he can't return to top 12 quarterback numbers, in, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, he's got some weapons, Van Jefferson, Higby, a healthy Cooper Cup, you know, Cam yes. Akers. There, there's some really good weapons around him. Definitely a safe guy. I just get a little bit hesitant on quarterbacks that had years to wow, sort of wow. And Denver comes into the Rams territory, build a superpower team offensively, defensively, wins a Super Bowl, gets hurt, hurt last year. And it's like, I just feel he's had his last hurrah. Could be wrong. They still could look good this year. But I think, I don't know, man. I'm just, Stafford just doesn't do it for me. He doesn't, he doesn't excite me. He doesn't give me the Deshaun Watson massage uh, type feeling. Like, I don't get that when I think of Deshaun, I don't, Matt Stafford. I really don't. But Russell uh, so Wilson, you do? <laughs> Russell Wilson, I get that. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Not, not really. Maybe as a backup with some upside. But other than that, no, there's no Deshaun Watson excitement here with okay. Matt Stafford for me. Okay. Uh, all right. So you like them. And again, I could be wrong, completely wrong, but these, these are your picks. So I'm not here to criticize them. Okay. All right. So, well, I am a little bit, but <laughs> <besides> <laughs> all right. Uh, next one here, my final sleeper. I absolutely love him. He's not so much a sleeper. He's coming off rounds like four or five. I don't think he'll fall to six in 12 person league is a guy that you actually, in our last episode, said you're, you're willing to date him. You're, you want a cougar on him. He's 21, right? He's a young guy. <laughs> you're going to cougar him. Uh, He's cute. We're talking Drake London. Drake London. I, I like him. He's a wide receiver one. Uh, currently sitting as like a wide receiver 21 on the Ken Sheeps' rankings. I mean, had a mediocre year last year. I mean, no way but up. The, you know, the, the, the rapport is going to be built up with him and Desmond Ritter. There really is no way but up for him this year. Again, Kyle Pitts, years to wow, we're not wowed. B. John's there. Bye, Jan. And you know, maybe, you know, that's going to distract the defenses, open things up, right? I, I, again, the big question mark here is Ritter, but I still like the value. You're getting a wide receiver one after you've gotten your art, your workhorse running backs and, and not invested in a wide receiver early, and he's your wide receiver one. But again, he's got some question marks based on quarterback. What do you think of Drake? Are you going to be drafting him? Uh, I'm sorry, but Desmond Ritter is not a serious quarterback. I cannot in good, <laughs> in good conscience, take anyone depending on that man to get them the ball. Um, London is a solid big body receiver that isn't stretching the field with his speed. I think he's going to have to work the middle of the field and go up for contested catches. Um, accuracy is super important on those. And I don't think Ritter has the arm to make him effective, especially with Pitts there right. also needing to get the ball and be fed. So. Well, I think it's just going to be – it doesn't have to be an accuracy thing. I think it's going to be a sheer volume thing. So as long as he just keeps feeding them, feeding them, feeding them, feeding them, we get those targets. We saw targets starting to get an uptick at the end of the season. I don't know, man. It's going to be a tricky one. Obviously, the value is depreciated. That's why he's a more of a sleeper at the wide receiver position because of the question marks with Desmond Ritter. But a lot of players have you know question marks. Anthony Richardson with the Colts, right? Is Pittman going to be viable, right? There's so many situations where these rookie or young quarterbacks or quarterbacks do situations. You know, it's just it's a weird year like that. So at the quarterback position, so. I don't know. It's a tough one. I believe in the talent of Drake London. Obviously, a first-round pick. I think he was eighth overall last year. 
he's going to be used. And I don't think he was even scratch the surface on his talent last year. So it's going to be definitely interesting. For sure. And there you have it. I mean, those are our six sleepers. Yeah. It seems like the audience, the audience loves it, Gwen, honestly. Good. I think they were cheering for my picks, not so much yours. <laughs> we'll see about that. Drop your opinions in the comments. All right, guys, make sure you guys grab the 16 round draft solution. Smash that thumbs up, guys. Subscribe. And of course, of course, patreon.com forward slash FF Council for direct access to us and exclusive videos and waiver wire and in season and starts and sits and all the fun stuff, optimal DFS, everything you need. Amazing community. Patreon.com forward slash FF Counselor. Go join right now. Thanks, Gwen, for coming on. We're going to keep pumping the content out to you guys. Gwen's going to be on more often. She knows her stuff. She's a football player, and I'm an armchair quarterback, so it's a good combination. <laughs> yeah, quite the combo. <laughs> All right, Gwen, we'll talk soon, eh? Yes, have very a good soon. Night. Have a, have a good day, too. guys. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye.